Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amitesh and in this video we're going to talk about the number line. We're going to talk about the natural numbers, the integers, the rational numbers, the irrational numbers and the real numbers. And this video is designed to be super accessible. So we're just going to go over the basics and cover all these concepts and let's just dive right into it. So to get started we're going to talk about the number line. And what is the number line? So the number line is pictorially, I'm just going to denote it by a line to begin with. So it's just going to be something like this. And this line is understood to be continuing on indefinitely in both directions, both in this direction and in the other direction, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to decorate the line with numbers. And the first numbers we're going to start off with are the so-called natural numbers. So the natural numbers, which mathematically is denoted by n, this funny little n here, these are called the natural numbers. So I'm just going to write them down below. It's called the natural numbers. And they're called the natural numbers for a very good reason. The reason is that they're natural. So, so we start off with basically one, two, three, four, dot, dot, dot. And these are basically the numbers we use in our day-to-day -day life just to count things. You know, count how many apples I have, count how many people are there in the room, etc. Okay, so these are the natural numbers and we can denote them on the line. Okay, so we have one, two, three, etc. And we understand the line goes on indefinitely in that direction. So if we've consolidated what the natural numbers are. The next step is to consider zero and negative numbers, which are also fairly common in day-to-day -day life. Zero just indicates nothing, which is a pretty important concept in some sense. But also zero is pretty important for describing things like a million or a billion, which is just one followed by lots of zeros. So it's very convenient there. And it's also very convenient in the basis for carry addition and carry multiplication, which we all see in school pretty early on. So zero is pretty fundamental. Um, so we denote it just here, this is zero. And we also have negative numbers. So negative numbers are also pretty important. And let me give you the following example. So what we can do is we can start off with, you know, I have seven apples and I give five apples to you. So that seven minus five apples are going to be what I have left over, which is two apples. On the other hand, if I have seven apples and I give nine apples to you, then the answer is going to be seven minus nine for what I have left over, which is negative two. And that seems a bit odd, but what the negative two represents is that I need two more apples to actually give you the nine apples. So when you say that seven minus five is two, that's how many apples I have left over, but seven minus nine is negative two, that means I need two more apples. So negative is kind of the opposite of positive. And on the number line, we denote it just like you go in the right direction, you go to the positive numbers, one, two, three. In the left direction, which is the opposite, you have the negative numbers, which is minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. It continues indefinitely in this direction. Okay, so we've got started here. So these are what we call the integers. The negative three, negative two, negative one, negative four, negative five, et cetera, zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. These are called the integers. And they're denoted by a funny little z. So again, this is not a real z. This is just a z that looks like this. And this z we have here, so I'm just gonna, just gonna draw it like this. So these are the integers. We call them the integers and they basically denote the numbers, you go in both directions. So negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, et cetera, and et cetera in the other direction too. Okay, so that's what we've got. So we've got Z is the integers, we've denoted them on the number line. Now the next step, once we've got the natural numbers and the integers, is to look at what happens between consecutive integers basically. So what are the numbers between one and two? Now again, it's very natural to consider, you know, you can drink one and a half bottles of water or you could eat one third of a pizza. So the ideas of having fractions or numbers that are not integers is also quite common. You know, even if I say I have, for example, you know, if I have like six apples and I want to give it to nine people, how many apples is each person going to get? It's going to be six over nine, which is two thirds. So it's again very natural for considering those kinds of questions to consider numbers that are not integers. Okay, so how do we look at it in the number line perspective is we sort of split up. So if I zoom in into this area between one and two, I can use decimals to be specific about where I am. 
and the more decimal points I use, the more specific I am. So to be, make this very clear, so I'm just going to take this segment with 1 and 2, and I'm just going to just zoom in here. Okay, So I'm sort of zoomed in in the number line. Just to make this very clear, I've got 1 and 2. Now what I can do is I can basically say 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, 1.3 and so on and so forth all the way up to 1.9 and 2. So you see that this is specifying numbers between 1 and 2 but with one decimal point. So you could also think of 1 as 1 1.0 and you can think of 2 as 2.0. Okay so we've got that. But now we can be even more specific. You know between 1.1 and 1.2 we can describe numbers using two decimal points. So again, if we sort of say like, if we zoom in, you know, I'm just going to zoom in here and just say 1.1 and 1.2, then again, what we can say is we can write down 1.11, 1.12, and so on and so forth, up to 1.19. And by using two decimal points, we've been more specific about where our number is between 1.1 and 1.2. So as you can see, you can go on doing this. You can go on using more and more decimals to be more specific. But there is one catch here, is that some important numbers cannot be described with just, des just finite decimals. You know, just using two decimals, three decimals, four decimals. You need infinitely many decimals. The reason for that is there are numbers such as pi, for example, and the square root of two. Pi is 3.14159265, etc. It just goes on forever. And the square root of 2, the number that squares to be 2, you can't write out the decimals forever. Uh, you need to go on writing them. You can't just write them with a finite number of decimal points. So um, these, to describe these numbers, um, we have to sort of think of it as a filling in the whole process. So you can't just describe all numbers with finite decimals. You need to include infinite decimal expansions. And another example of this is if I have numbers like the following sequence. For example, if I have 1.1, 1.11, 1.111, etc., 1.1111, etc. You get the idea. You're being more and more specific about what your number is, but how do you ultimately like say what the number is at the end if you just keep on going? That's going to be this number that we denote by 1.111, etc., and the ones keep on going forever. So that's the ultimate specificity of this number. We cannot describe it with just a finite number of um, decimal places. Okay, so to include all these numbers is important. This is like filling in the holes. And this gives us what are the so-called real numbers. Okay, so I'm just going to um, write that down here. Maybe I will just erase this now that we've written this down here. The so-called real numbers. Okay, so real numbers, and these are denoted by R. So again, R is in a funny sense. Okay, it's not like a standard R that we know. Um, these are called the real numbers, and they are basically denoting, one way of saying it is, all decimal expansions. Expansions that are finite or infinite. Finite or infinite. Okay, so those are all the real numbers. So pi is a real number, 1.567892, stop there, that's a real number. Square root 2 is a real number, fractions are real numbers. Um, and this is actually an interesting point, is that fractions can also have infinite decimal expansions. So for example, 22 over 7, this is a famous approximation of pi. If you try to write it out, it's going to be 3.142857. And this is just going to keep repeating, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, et cetera. So the 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 repeats, and, and this is sometimes the convenient way to denote this mathematically, is 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, you put a bar over it, just to say it keeps repeating. And um, this, this is an infinite um, decimal, which is important to include. Um, you know, you could solve the problem. Suppose I have like 22 apples and I'm giving to seven people, how many is each person going to get? I'll need to write it out as a decimal in that way. Um, but so you can have infinite decimals that are fractions, and finite decimals are always going to be fractions. You know, 1.4 is 14 over 10. 1.45 is one, 145 over 100. So you can keep going like that. Um, but numbers that in general can be represented as fractions, we call them rational numbers. So that's the, the next step. They're denoted by Q. So Q, this is again a like funny little Q, not a standard Q that we know. 
Um, these are the rational numbers. So rational numbers, this is denoted by Q. Okay, so these are going to denote all fractions. Okay, so all fractions. And in math, it's very important to be extra precise about what you mean by fraction. Okay, like we want to be super precise so there's no confusion. And by fractions, I mean numbers of the form A over B, where A and B are integers. And B is non-zero. Okay, these are what we call fractions. Um, and it's important that A and B are integers, because otherwise you could just say anything is that thing over one. So anything's a fraction, but that's not really legal. And also it's important we, we don't divide by zero. You cannot divide by zero. You cannot say, you know, three over zero, what's it gonna be? Well, I mean, 10 over five is equal to two because five times two is 10, right? So I'm just gonna write this out actually. So let me just erase this here. So if I draw something like 10 over 5, why do we say that's equal to 2? Because if you multiply the 5 and the 2, you get 10, right? So this, this equation, 10 over 5 is 2, is just the same as saying 10 is equal to 5 times 2. But if I want to say, you know, what is, I don't know, like 3 over 0, what is it equal to? Well, what number multiplies with 0 to be 3? I mean, there is no number. I mean, anything times 0 is just 0. So 3 over 0 is undefined. If you try to put it in your calculator, it should say it's undefined. Um, so I'm just going to say undefined. So we have to not divide by 0, but we're considering all fractions, A over B, where A and B are integers. So it could be negative, it could be positive, it doesn't matter. Negative 3 over 7 is a fraction. We cannot divide by 0. This includes all integers. Okay, so natural numbers are integers. Integers are rational numbers because every integer is that integer over one, which is the valid fraction in that way. So these are the rational numbers. And finally, we have um, what we call the irrational numbers, which are, so this is, this is, doesn't usually have a very uh, common notation in my experience. Um, you know, typically, I mean, there are ways of denoting it using like mathematical notation I won't get into. But you can denote them by i. Um, this is not super common necessarily, but it's used a lot. Um, these are called irrational numbers. And these are um, real numbers that are not rational. That are not rational. They're called irrational. Okay, so just a quick comment is that rational numbers, they have, so they have like finite decimals or infinite repeating decimals. But irrational numbers, they have infinite decimals that are non-repeating. So you can say that that's the same thing as saying it's irrational, is these are numbers, um, real numbers, make the brackets nice and symmetrical. So kind of a number like pi, that's an example of an irrational number. Root two is also an example of an irrational number. Um, actually proving that they're irrational, because how do you actually do it, right? If I say they're irrational, you say, how, how do you know, how do I know that there is no fraction that I can use to describe pi or root two? I mean, you, you can't just go through all the fractions and say each and every one is not pi. So you need some kind of argument, some kind of rigorous argument that's watertight beyond doubt. And actually, this is not so easy. Um, this is quite difficult. In the case of pi, it's, I would say, very difficult. In the case of root 2, it's also difficult. I, I might talk about these in future videos. In fact, I, I probably will talk about root 2. Um, but proving numbers are irrational is hard um, because you have to show there doesn't exist any fraction. You know, showing something doesn't exist is quite tricky. Um, you know, it's like if you're in a house and you say that there is no, like, apple in this house. I mean, how are you going to do that? You have to literally go through the whole house and not find an apple. But sometimes proving something exists is easy. Like saying that you have a house, there is an apple. Well, you know, where is the apple likely to be? It's likely to be in the kitchen. You can sort of try, if you, if you know that something exists, it's often a lot easier to prove that it actually does exist. So in the same way, proving that numbers are irrational is quite difficult in general. Um, but these are the irrationals and the rationals, they comprise the real numbers. So I've denoted the natural numbers, the ir natural numbers, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. The integers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, etc. 
Um, and then from there we go to the rational numbers, which include all the integers, just like the integers include the natural numbers. And the rational numbers are just all the fractions, which you can also think of as finite decimals, or you can think of them as infinite repeating decimals. Um, and the repetition can start late. So you can have a number like 2.53, and then it can repeat 888, etc. And that's also rational. And then finally, you have the irrational numbers, which are the numbers that have infinite non-repeating decimals. And they cannot be represented as fractions. And lastly, the real numbers are just all, all the numbers, rational or irrational, all infinite, all decimals, infinite, finite, etc. Um, those are the real numbers. And the real numbers are what we call the number line. So this video is a super quick, accessible introduction to what are these basic concepts that show up everywhere in math. Um, so there's a famous quote by a mathematician, his name was Kronecker. So he said that God created the natural numbers and everything else was invented by man. And I think um, the way of thinking of that is that basically the natural numbers are sort of, you know, you just count things. But then after that, we're sort of doing some mental gymnastics. We're sort of using abstract thinking to represent things and ideas. Um, and, and, you know, you could say that the rational number is also pretty common. I mean, like I said, you know, you, you want to divide things, you want to talk about one third of something. Um, but, you know, when you get into things like, and even pi is also pretty common, but um, somehow, um, in some sense, like math keeps extending. Uh, and and this, this requires progress. I mean, probably very, people very early on had a sense of what the natural numbers were. But then to discover things like pi and root 2 and, um, you know, more complicated numbers, that comes later. So thank you so much for listening. I hope this video gave you a good overview of what the number line and the basic concepts are. If you have any comments whatsoever or any thoughts or anything whatsoever, please feel free to leave a comment down below. You know, thoughts, comments, feedback, encouragement, everything. I'm super happy to, um, to receive it and it'll mean a lot to me to read your comments. So please feel free to leave one down below. And on a similar note, you know, please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed my video. The great thing about YouTube is that everything's free and accessible. Um, and liking and subscribing is also um, free, takes a second. And it would mean a lot to me and it would really help disseminate these videos to as many different people as possible. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I really enjoyed making this video and talking to you. And I'm super excited to see you in the next video and also engage with you if you leave comments. Thank you so much and um, I'll see you later.